What do you want me to say? Street school, Grandma. Street school. <laughs> Mighty Lion of Judah. It's certain times when we've been on this tour or we've experienced um we've experienced that rainbow after the storm. You know, because we had some dark times and there's times where we didn't think that it was going to show dividends and we've just been putting a lot of energy, a lot of finances, a lot of capital into this and um, it hasn't been showing dividends and just one day out of the blue, it was like we was just looking at each other and, and I think he actually said it first and um, he said it's funny what a few jokes can get you. Funny what a few jokes can get you. That's and it's stuck and every now and then, you know, when we're in Times Square, when we're uh, backstage at a Dave Chappelle concert or we're um, at the Bad Boy Reunion concert and we, we're, we're, we're not supposed to be here but we're backstage and shaking hands with French Montana and uh, getting advice from DMX. I mean, we look at each other and that phrase would always come up, how it's funny what a few jokes can get you. <laughs> Entertainment system first, and then I forget it was. I was like, "Oh, you good?" This nigga, like, fail. yeah, fail right through the table. And then everybody was like, "Hold up, y'all ain't gonna be doing that to my cousin." I'm like, dude, he did that to himself. <laughs> the nigga was like, "Nah, nigga, you ain't gonna do that to my cousin." Yeah, that nigga was like, "Nigga, you ain't gonna do that to my cousin." Yeah, that nigga was like, "Nigga, you ain't gonna do that to my cousin." Yeah, that nigga was like, "Nigga, you ain't gonna do that to my cousin." Yeah, that nigga was like, and then the crazy part was when everything got broke, he was looking like, dang, yo, what happened? <laughs> you happened. You happened, brother. And what's crazy is nobody got cut. That was a lot of glass. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know. I still remember, man. I had a lot of fun, though. <laughs> <laughs> good, it was some good dip, though. Yeah. <laughs> I've been knowing Boo all my life. <laughs> yeah, 32 years. I know him as Boop Daddy. Yeah, that's how I know him. Yeah, all right, Boop Daddy. Call yeah. this nigga T Springs, man. <laughs> yeah, which is crazy because. We be out. I do it on the road. <laughs> we be out. I was. I was. You know, all of my successes has been me. You know what I mean? Just the groundwork, me. Me and Boots do, you know what I mean? It's just funny when he's calling me T, I know it. Like, he, I called him the other day and he answered the phone like, What's up, T? And I was like, somebody else must be on this phone call. He was like, yeah, yeah, I got this promoter on. on. He's moving in with the call. Like, well, call me back later on because I need to talk to you about some real nigga shit. Like, I'm not calling you as T right now, my yeah. I'm calling you as Boots, my G. We get into some T shit later on. Like, Dude, oh, man. It's crazy. I was like, I don't know. You know, being from a small town, there's a lot of shit you just think, nah. <laughs> right. Nah, if you would have told me that millions of people would see my face and well over a million of them would remember it and recognize it wherever I go, that's crazy, man. Like, like popular in London. Like, that don't even make sense. <laughs> you ever been to London? Never. I don't even have a passport, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, life now, man, is, is, is crazy. 
You know what I'm saying? I, you know, people always ask, uh, you know, how do you stay humble? I mean, laughing because when you come from humble beginnings, you understand that this life ain't promised. Ain't nothing like this. This don't even happen to people where I'm from. <laughs> Staying humble, shit, I'm still trying to figure out if this is real. I'm thinking I'm going to wake up one of these days. Just <laughs> wake up like, ah, I ain't even play. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give it, don't give it to me. Only because You're I like you. You're trying to, but don't give it to me. Bro. I see what you trying to do. Only because I like you, bro. And I got a fork, go so let me go get you a fork, and I'll be right. Go get, go get them. It'll change your life. Hey, man. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Can you get that fork? Uh-oh. There's no way I can take this cake from you, man. It's just. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You told him he was coming. Yeah, I'm on my way. He was like, all right, you call the nigga. Like, oh damn, I left the house and went to Top Golf. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Eddie, you sure you don't want this man? I'm sorry. No, I can bring him some more. Nah, Eddie, you should really um <laughs> keep it, man. For real, good give away stuff like that, man. <laughs> It's really weird, man. <laughs> sure, you want me to have this? Cause I ain't gotta eat it. I, I, I'm positive, man. If you I'm don't positive. Want me to eat it, okay. I'm positive, man. That that that's for me to you, man. That, that's I, well, I appreciate your kindness, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna say top golf. Yeah, they gonna do like they gonna get a facial. Like what the fuck, man? You got a facial? You got a facial, my nigga. <laughs> I'll do, man. I'll do it too. I appreciate you. <laughs> 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 Hmm. <laughs> That's another thing. We would think we came together and then he got to say, man, this, we've been, man, listen. <laughs> listen, we, we quit our jobs, bruh. Like, taking trips. Neither one of us got a license. <laughs> Somebody else done rented the car. Hey. Somebody else done rented the car. We just got to get there. Hey. Well... The story is longer than most people know. You know, the whole Ron Davis brand, T Springs, it wasn't something that just happened. You know, it wasn't like somebody just found him and then found me and was like, you two guys should link. Like, we actually got more history than people know. Damn, a hundred fucking struggle stories. <laughs> right, listen, that's like a hundred struggle stories and like three triumphs. Yeah, like, right. <laughs> right. I don't get that story. No. People don't get that. You know, we was raised in the same apartment complex neighborhood, and um, it was tough. It was a tough neighborhood, um, low income housing. Like, have you ever split a slider, nigga? Like, do you know? <laughs> Cabarrus Arms. Cabarrus Arms Apartments. It's not <laughs> half on a burger. You ever go half on a slider, nigga? Like, <laughs> uh, it's very well known in the Kannapolis area. And during the ages that we were running around, it was very highly drug infested. You know, one of those situations where you don't want to be out after the street lights come on. Oh, you mean playing in your house and still can hit your head on the concrete in your house? <laughs> uh, interesting, man. It was interesting. Uh-oh. Actually, it's a way better community than what we grew up in. I went over there not too long ago, and it's flowers planted. <laughs> All the buildings are the same color now. It's crazy. <laughs> it's flowers planted. Uh, the pizza man actually delivers there now. Yeah, they put doors on the building. It's it's cute now. <laughs> when we was growing up, it was so bad the pizza man wouldn't even deliver there because he probably would get robbed. The shutters on the same color. They got shutters on all the buildings. It's crazy. That's and and some people laugh and think that's a joke, but that's serious. We used to really have to walk like up the street to the fire department to receive our pizzas. It was like, bro, listen. Like we used to go on the road. I got to I I eat something, bro, before I go up, bro. I got to eat something. And like, we you hear him talking about before you go, this was when like he was doing the comedy. Like, yeah. I was just like helping yeah, on the road. Yeah, he hadn't been on stage yet. We was on the Hey, we
we out here at the Comedy Zone in Charlotte, North Carolina. How you guys enjoy the show? I um, mean, it was amazing. First time seeing Ryan? First time. Definitely you, won't be the last. No. Bad, bad, man. Thank you guys for coming out. What, what up, up though? Two, two sold out shows. I know that's right. Two, two of the things. It was great. It was good. It was. Really good. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Yeah, to his show, yes. Dope, man. Dope. Well, uh, you want to give a shout out to yourselves, man? We're going to put this in the documentary, man. What you going to say? What am I going to say? <laughs> yeah, dude. I met, I met Ryan when I met David Gamble. Uh huh. To come out. I haven't seen him out in a while. So, you gotta tell him to step it up, dude. Comedy Zone, Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah. All right, Canapolis, you know what I'm saying? Concord, whatever you want to call it. But we the got on the camera, dope, man. Yo. Hey, listen, man, it's Tyrone Boston, man. The host with the most. You already know what time it is, man. I host all the local shit for the kid, Ryan Davis. Uh, Book Springs, Teesprings. Let me get that yeah, shit straight. Yeah, yeah, they know always want to correct me on that shit. Nigga was crazy funny tonight, man. Charlotte Comedy Zone, Chief Springs tore the fucking building down, man. Big shout out to that dude. He's growing rapidly. One of the funniest dudes in the country, man. Hands down. That's a fact, bro. Salute to him. Salute the way he came from, where he at now. It's crazy, yo. Love that dude, man. That's crazy, bro. It's our own person, man. Appreciate you. Shout out to that dude, man. For real. I appreciate that. You see the fire department up there? Compare songs apartments, man. I um the crazy part is, man, we were poor and I didn't know it. You know, it's a testament to what kind of parents I had, man. Where you just didn't feel like you were going without, even though you were going without. <laughs> it shows that you know me as a parent. Now realize my parents probably Went without a lot to make sure we had, you know what I mean? That's why I vowed that once I got in a position to take care of my parents, that I would tell them I appreciate it, but I'm going to keep my money. But, I, uh, <laughs> and once I got enough money to do so, I'd be like, you know, I'm not going to do it, but, you know what I mean, I appreciate what y'all did, because I wouldn't be here. Without y'all, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it ain't, it ain't all been like, everybody be thinking like, this shit just popped off and was all cool and was all sweet, like, nah. Oh, that's what's up, that's <laughs> cool. That's the good thing that me and him got is that like, no matter about none of the fame and stuff, like, we still humble down Wait, up here with the fame too, dude. Speaking of that, speaking of that. I'm never going, I don't even know how to change Yeah, that's bro. what I was telling him, like, the humbleness, like, because of where we come from, when you start off with nothing and you get a little something, nothing. you still think about those people that ain't got nothing, so it's like, like it was bad. Like, my nigga, I was the first nigga, like, bro, no, buy them drawers, nigga, you want them, get them, bro. You deserve them, bro. Nah, yeah. huh, nah, sir, we got it. Yeah, yeah. Get the drawers, bro. Yeah. Yeah, that's how you don't look at the, Don't look in the shoe and see how much it costs. That's what you want. They cool. You like them? They're nice. Right. He getting the joys. Yeah. Nah, you know right. what I mean? Like, you got right. to gotta spoil yourself when you don't put in the work, bro. Right. Totally. Totally. Right. It was times that shit, like, was sour as hell. We had a, uh, for example, we had a time where we put a show together. It's not that's like the thing, man. We grinded poor. So, <laughs> grinded so grinding poor. with the money is just like, ain't it a blessing? <laughs> <laughs> It was supposed to be like a three city tour. And um, we brought your boy in, um, Shawty, what my name is. You know. I've been shooting a documentary. I just did a commercial over there. I'm always doing something. And then this right here is good for my brand. I got the shout out what I am. I got people who may not have heard of me get to hear me be funny over the radio. Y'all go over the airways. And um, I got an investor that put up a lot of money for it. And, you know, we were really just going to do Concord. Me and Ryan was in charge of doing Concord. And he had brought some other people in that he trusted to do the other two cities was Jacksonville, North Carolina, and Greensboro, North Carolina. And um, 
It was supposed to be Jacksonville, Concord, then Greensboro. So we pretty much sold the Concord show out. Concord show was looking good. Jacksonville fell flat on his face. Then we were going to cancel the Greensboro show, but the person was like, you know, let's just keep doing it. That's so still a business move for me. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I mean? And I'm building relationships. Y'all do this. We know each other. I'm following y'all on social media now and all, everything. It's all about building relationships. So I made a phone call. It was a girl from uh, Washington, D.C. that was a friend of ours. We've done a show with her before. She's dope as hell. Her name is Paris Sache. Y'all go check her out. And um, I contacted her, and I was paying for her to come do the show out of my pocket. Now, mind you, at this time, I'm still not a comedian. I'm just Ryan's guy. I got the investors. I got the business plan. But I trusted him this time to do the shows. We get to Greensboro. Uh, I pick her up from the bus stop. Um, by now, we're so in a hole financially that we don't even have enough money to get her hotel room, to pay for her food, or even have gas money to get home. This is how crazy <laughs> this is, bro. The reason we were like that because the act didn't eat for free. Right. I had to pay. Even in some place, at best, I had to get half off. So if I got half off, then we probably had an entree. Yeah, a cool $7. So you get something that's about, you know, 10, 11, yeah, and you get, you get it for half. That's gonna put you around. You know what I mean? It's a nice size. It's got a nice size to it. So we're kinda of hoping this Greensboro show is going good. So we use all the money that we had to buy her something to eat in a hotel room. We couldn't even afford a hotel room for ourselves. Size to it. Try to get something hit, uh, hearty. Yeah, hey. try to get something real savory and hearty. Hey, uh, hey, for the bread people. come with this? Does bread come with this? Hey, the comedian. We get to the to the show. It's like 15 people at the show, and 12 of them came with the DJ. Right, I mean, yeah, real, man. Like, said, like, he was the only one like, yeah, we so don't that go half, was for him. We don't go <laughs> half on the lasagna. Can I get uh, um, eight slices of bread with that, man? Yeah, and bring them crackers. <laughs> yeah, bring, <laughs> just trying to get it. Everything. <laughs> I mean, That's real, like, cause they was only feeding him. So, like, yeah, the places so. that would do that, it would be either half off for him or free for him. So he would get the meal, and like, if it was like a grilled chicken with mashed potatoes, he would like eat the chicken a little bit, and I would just smash the mashed potatoes in the bread. Man, well, we were really, and then the check was nothing. The check was enough. The check was in back home. <laughs> yeah, the check is how we get back home. So <laughs> with the check, we get one meal. We find we get our one meal, and nigga, we ain't talking about steak, nigga. Four for four. You get <laughs> your one meal. It's seriously like that. So we didn't make any money off that show. So when we get back to taking her to a hotel room, we're left with the dilemma: like, do you want to drive all the way back home to Kannapolis? Then come back in the morning and pick her up because we had nowhere to stay in Greensboro. Because we didn't want her to know that we couldn't afford the shit. Like, we was, like, really embarrassed. So we eventually just got her in her hotel room, and she still don't know this. Got her in her hotel room. was like, yeah, we about to go over to our room now. We got in the car and circled around the hotel to the back, parked the car, cracked the windows, and slept in the car. <laughs> nah, I'm going to tell you what else is funny. We made sure, which we don't do no more. We made sure we got up every morning for that continental breakfast. <laughs> Had to. Listen. <laughs> Nigga, and, uh, you missed one. <laughs> and you dog sleepy. You yeah. sleepy as hell. Like, let me get my ass on down here and feel up. Like, <laughs> then we woke up the next morning and changed clothes as if we had, like, actually showered and, you know, changed up and went to her room, like, hey, you ready to go? Yeah, that was some good sleep. But now nah, we actually slept in the car, man. We slept in the car that night. Uh, the show must go on. We took a loss financially, um, but we got it done. Because it's about to be a five-hour drive man, listen. back to the crib with nothing. Because we got a Still, check that we can't cash yet. Got a it's check, can't even cash it yet because they ain't paying in cash. We got a tank check. full of gas. And we're about to go down and hit this continental breath and eat up all these fucking raisin brands. Eat everything. I'm taking everything bananas that's and portable, yeah, the banana. <laughs> Bro, I'm taking every 
thing, <laughs> nigga. Like, oh my gosh. That's we weird. did. We did. Look and and selling merch. If we ain't getting no merch what? off you on E, wow. nigga. Like see, people buy merch now. We might do five hundred dollars in merch. Like we killed them. They were like, how in the world are you? Because some people probably were like, then how'd you get the rental car, nigga? Merch. That's a sell merchandise. <laughs> you might sell. I might be pulling all that shit out, doing all that, and sell four shirts. Nigga, we winning! Forty dollars? <laughs> yes! <laughs> we winning! You know, we got it done, and those are the things that we look back on and say, damn! Now, when we're staying in a five-star hotel, and they're bringing candy and chocolates to the door, and, and, and complimentary robes, you know, and spa treatments and shit, like, people like, y'all living it up, but they don't remember them times we slept in the car with no heat. You know, they don't remember like we had to cut the car off because if we sleep with the car on, the gas gonna run out. Like they don't, they don't know about those times. So you know, it's it's crazy to me because now you know what I mean. I sell a hoodie for forty dollars. Yeah, I mean, before we were selling every T-shirt for yeah. ten dollars. <laughs> ten dollars. You got seven. Okay, get here. <laughs> yeah. That's ten crazy. dollars. Oh, I ain't got ten. All I got is seven. Man, come on, man. Man, get a shirt. <laughs> what size you at, baby? <laughs> Man, anybody that's on the grind, man, you got to stay down till you come up, really, bro. You got to stay down till you come up. <laughs> you heard me. You heard me. Killing me, bro. Yeah, Killing that was real. Me. I count, we'll count that up like, well, we made $52 <laughs> in merch tonight. Nigga, we going to eat. You like 52? Well, you did your thing, bro. Sell them shirts, bro. Oh, cut some deals, man. All right, oh. Um. Yeah, I mean, we it, it was more like that was the title we gave it, but it was just like you know, you're my friend, what you need, you know. That's how we grew. That's how we grew up. You know, if it cost me nothing to look out or help out or whatever, I'm all for that. And when it, when it was times when I was taking my paychecks to help his shit pop, I wasn't even hitting the stage yet. I don't know, man. I don't know. I know this much though. If I ever fall off, it won't be because I stopped trying. It'll be because I'm just not funny no more. Somehow, all the humor left my body, and I can't do it no more. Because I can do this forever. I wasn't thinking that far ahead. It was just that, um, like I said, I was just committed, man. I, I, I think back now, like, what the fuck? Like... <laughs> Like, I would really get off work or, like, call off my job and let them know I'm going to be out of town for two or three days. And I, like I said, I wasn't even doing comedy on stage then. It was just that I believed in it. You know what I mean? Not just his talent, the whole brand. You know what I mean? Like, I believed in it. And it ain't even a want to. I need to do this. Like, I, I get up and tell jokes and make videos whether people was going to watch them or not. That's just me, man. I just like to create stuff. You know, and that's what this move to Hollywood is about. Moving to Hollywood, leaving everything behind. Uh, me and Ryan, when we set out to do this, we didn't have a plan B. You know, this is what we wanted to do. And every time that we made a plan B, that we deterred from this dream, or that we, uh, that we tried to put our foot into something else, it didn't work. You know, it just didn't work. And we couldn't figure out what we was doing wrong until we came to the realization that we prayed for this. So why not give it all? I, I always notice that I work better whenever I put myself in a corner. Like if I, I don't know, man, if like when I quit my job, I made it so this comedy had to pay the bills. So if the comedy has to pay the bills, I'm gonna do what it takes to get it to pay the bills. And it's all a blessing. Um, I tell people all the time, don't complain about something you prayed for. God gave us this, so uh, we got to give it our all. You know, and any time that we feel like we need to do something else or need to slow it down, he quickly shows us that we prayed for it and he can take it back from us. So right now, we're just full throttle, man. We're just full throttle. The now, the now is much way better than the, than the before, dog. And moving to L.A., you know, it's like, I'm leaving friends and family behind to to take it to the next level. So I don't have a choice but to take it to the next level. I don't 
I, failing is not an option. Doing something positive makes other people want to be supportive of you, not because they benefit from it. Like if somebody truly loves you and truly care about you, they want to see you do well. You know what I mean? And it's done been sometimes where people that love me and support me had to let me fly alone, let me do something alone. They had to not help me on purpose so I can see how that feels to be able to appreciate them. So. I don't get the fail. That's not. <laughs> Nobody ever thinks that they're gonna make it. I don't think. There's, there's always doubt. That's uh, just with artistry. You don't never think uh, that you're good enough, or that somebody's gonna recognize your greatness, or anybody's gonna, you know what I mean? It's like, and then you know, there's so much competition out there. Then you see people you think aren't half as talented as you, but twice as popular as you are, or 50 times more popular than you are, and you go. All right, what? Well, if this is what people are looking for, I'm never going to make it. Fear. People are more afraid of success than they are of failure. And it sounds crazy. Uh, if you're born into failure, if you're born at rock bottom and you see so much turmoil around you, it becomes the norm. And I, I've been guilty of this before as well. Uh, I've been so attached to and committed to this tour and trying to build my brand that when opportunities came for me individually to prosper, I was afraid. Initially, I was just afraid, like, oh my God, I have to fly alone, you know. The funny part is, loyalty is extremely important for a foundation, I'm gonna tell you, man, because every year, you know what I the crazy part is my career is moving so fast it ain't even every year every four months every four months you meet a new group a new caliber of people you know what I mean if you got somebody who ain't loyal it's hard to go to the next step when they worried about other things right right you know what I mean when once somebody becomes a weight instead of a helping hand you know, which is really easy to do, man. It's really easy to it's do. It's really easy to do, especially when you come from nothing. You know what I mean? But a lot of people do not prosper because they have a plan B, a plan C. Like, if you really believe in it and you've prayed on it and you have faith in it, that should be all that matters. You should be willing to go broke. You should be willing to go homeless. You should be willing to throw everything at your plan A. And if you fall flat on your face, you should be able to live with it. Nah, man. I, I was myself. And uh, people embraced that. I never, uh, I never forget that. And that's what I'm always giving my fans, man. It's me all the time. Uh, you know, yeah, there was times in my life I had insecurities, man, but my fans are the dopest, man. They showed me that being myself was good enough. That was good enough. That's what we wanted to do. And to see where it's at now, it's, it's gratifying. But like I say, it's also good to be able to uh, show other people that it's possible. <laughs> My name is Tony Alexander. I'm from Charlotte. I'm with the comedy song here in Charlotte. I'm trying to find out who this Ryan Davis dude is. I've been seeing him everywhere. I've been hearing about him.
Because, see, this is the funny part. I never had an issue getting beautiful women. Right. It's because I'm confident and funny, and I ain't really afraid, you know what I mean, to shoot my shot. But, um, so I, I've dated beautiful women before. The frequency, all right, <laughs> has skyrocketed. Like, before, you know, I had, I had, my personality had to grow on you or whatever. You had to know me. Like, I didn't, I wasn't pulling a nine straight off uh, first impression. You know what I mean? They say more money, more problems. I don't know about that, but it's definitely more money, new same, problems. I've said the same thing, bro. Like, I can't even talk about more money, more problems when I never had money. Because all my problems were financial problems. Exactly. <laughs> and then once they're not financial problems, the more you get these new, new sets problems. of problems. So, and, one, and one of those new sets of problems is um, relationship dealing with money. But uh, now... I ain't gotta say nothing. They feel like they know me. They already know. Like a lot of women already decide in their mind that we compatible. They ain't never met me. They He's just my, my type. They're, 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 I they're think like shooting their shot. Yeah, I think like, he's smart. He's successful. He's funny. He's just the type check, I need. Check, check. He seems like me and him will work out. Don't know nothing about me. <laughs> Like, I, I like the yeah, 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 that's what I got to. Yeah, like, like, yeah. Dang, dang, he's o overly handsome. Like, bitch, stop lying. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I'm attracted to him. <laughs> I, I get that a lot. Like, girl, come on, man. I am not like throw yourself yeah, at. Like, that's what I be saying. Like, baby, she be like, come on, baby, like, I think you're really handsome. I was like, I think you lie. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let you sell me. I'm gonna rock <laughs> with it. Yeah, because right, that, that was always my eyes. That's the one that <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think a lot of women think my eye color is lighter than what it is. Like they're they're lighter they're a lighter brown than most people. But I'm not like nah. Hazel. All my videos the flash is on. That's why my eye <laughs> so my eyes are that light. <laughs> <laughs> like not that man, and I'm gonna tell you how bold they are. Like you, like this is when you you find out. You know what I mean? We uh, went somewhere before. This girl had a whole change of clothes in her purse. Like already. she already knew she wasn't going. I mean, home. she come out there with some leggings. And I'm like, Did she go home? Huh? Yeah, we she made her go. <laughs> made her go home. She didn't want to. Go she got like we took her back to a car. She, and she showed got too many like, signs of crazy. To I know think I'm I too. Yeah, you come with a packed bag, man. It was a lot of. It was a lot of stuff that. Yeah, man. It was a lot of stuff that looked premeditated. <laughs> Like, it was just like, then when she okay. got to a car, she was like, do y'all know like, any hotels around right here? I was like, plan. you're at one. You can go get your own room. Then she was like, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it home. I was like, damn, that's fucked up. Ain't had no drinks, no nothing. No, like, you ain't, this you ain't is had regular. Drink in three hours, girl. Come on, let's, come on, y'all, let's pull off. Yeah, I was like, man, that's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, once you have money and have relationships, and once people like, see you have money, that's another thing. Because you don't change those around you. Like I told you, there's, there's some people you change, that, that you have to crazy. cut off, that you that you don't cut off. They cut themselves off because in their mind they think like, oh, I ain't gonna call him. He probably busy. Like I, I, if you think that way about me, then you really don't know me. Man, you know what I'm saying? people who know you in essence, You're not a going person. Nowhere. Listen, some people cut themselves off. Like you said, they listen. They think, oh. You know, now that he's at this level, he probably ain't even gonna answer my phone call. Well, because you're doing that, that means that you think that I'm different and you're cutting yourself off, which means that you don't know me in essence because I wouldn't do that to nobody. You know what I mean? I, I'm who I'm gonna be forever. If, if you fuck with me, um, you rocked with me from day one, man, then you somebody that's supposed to rock with me all the way to the end. <laughs> 